Back on the Anglers Extra pregame Show, let's do the manager show for the 25th time this year to the, my right. Yeah, already. Only 19 more to go after this until the playoffs. Wow. I know. It's flying by. Manager John Schiffner to my right. I'm Johnny Wincott as Chatham comes back home to Veterans Field after back-to-back -back losses. Most recently, a 13-8 to loss at Harwich. We'll talk about that ninth inning in a second, but the first eight innings, it was 13 to nothing Harwich. What happened? Yeah, I think it's pretty easy what happened. You know, we, didn't, we didn't pitch real well. We didn't hit real well. So, uh, that, and then we actually didn't field very well. It was a bad game. We, just, it was, we call those stinkers. But you kind of leave the field feeling a little bit better about yourself when you throw an eight spot in the last inning. I was proud of the kids. You know, they could have just like three swing, roll over on three ground balls, and let's get out of here to ninth inning. But they battled, and, and they ended up scoring eight runs, got a bunch of hits, and actually got Harwich a little nervous. They had to get a relief pitcher warmed up. So I was proud of them for that. Well, what does that say about the character of your team, that no matter the score, they're still going hard? No, they, play, they want to play. They don't like to lose. They want to play. And that's, that shows us they do have character, and we're very happy about that. I'm happy for them, happy for us that we've been able to do that with them. So I'm very pleased. Garrett Williams went from reliever to designated hitter to the starting pitcher last night. He went three innings, gave up five runs. If he had gone a little bit stronger yesterday, was there going to be an innings limit, having it be his, his well, first start? That, and he reached it. I mean, he was gassed. I mean, that's the most he's thrown in maybe two months. I mean, but the, the deal was that he needs to try to start. They'd like to see him be a starting pitcher next year in, uh, in their rotation. So that's what we're going to try to do, trying to accommodate Oki State. And, you know, next he's going to – we're going to roll him out there in six more days, and you know, hopefully he gets four innings or five innings, you know, because he'll do his in-between work and get stronger. And you know, his stuff was okay. Uh, he started, he had started to aim some fastballs. Good, he got behind an account. You can't get behind an account and expect to be successful. You got to be a pitch ahead. So throw strikes, and you'll be okay. And he was two and zero, oh, three and one a lot, and you know, they're good hitters, so they did what they're supposed to do in hitters counts. Well, you mentioned in those first eight innings there weren't that many positives, but one person that was positive was your catcher, Nick Collins. He's now quietly riding a six-game hit streak. He had three hits last night, and he's just an absolute rock behind the plate. Only one pitch got past him. What can you say about your catcher? No, he's had a great summer, and uh, we're very pleased. Uh, he's everything that Pete, Coach Pete Wilk from Georgetown told me I was going to expect, and the, even the little things that you don't see as much on the field like hitting and catching, he's a team leader. I mean, the guys respect him. They looked up, look up to him, and, you know, that, that's he's a great kid to be around. Georgetown is not normally a nationwide known baseball program. Have you had any other kids from Georgetown come oh, here? Oh, not in a long time, but I have. But I, you know, the name is names escaped me. But it wasn't many. You're absolutely right. That's not you know known as a traditional power. But Pete Wilkes done a very good job there, and it's you know that's difficult. I mean, the SAT scores you need to get in there, and then you know you you give a kid a scholarship, and it's still spending more. You know, you can give a kid a 25 percent scholarship, he's probably still spending 40 grand. So it's really difficult to get somebody in there. Uh, so that's a difficult school to coach at, and Pete's done a good Good job, and you know, obviously, getting a player like Nick shows you what, what, what kind of recruiting he's doing. So he sent you Nick because he thought Nick was that good that he should compete at the Cape level. Absolutely, and he knows me very well, and he always says, "Shift when I have one, I want to send him to you." And you know, he, when Pete calls, I listen. You know, because he, he Pete understands where he's at. He knows he doesn't have that many Cape players, so when we when he gets one, he calls first. Well, fast forward to today, you take on the Wareham Gatemen, who are seven and seventeen, the worst record in the Cape. I know you don't really look at things like that. You can't. He really can't because everybody's the same. Everybody's a, a, a inch away, two inches away. You know, an error here, uh, a, a bad, a, a bad pitch there, and they could be 500 or better. You know, it's it's luck. It's all luck. That's a good team. I mean, you, I've seen them. We've seen them. This will be our third or what? Fourth time we're going to see them. Fourth time. Fourth time, and you know, we've seen them. They're good. They're very good. We beat them, I believe, twice. Um, you know, it, but they could have easily beaten us. They did, did beat us. I mean, so, uh, yeah, that's the that's the thing about the Cape. There's such a fine line between, you know, a, a win and a loss. And, uh, you know, Coop's got a good team there. A couple breaks here and there, they could obviously be better. So, you know, we're, we just will, we, we've got our breaks. We've taken advantage of our breaks and hope we do again tonight. The first time Wareham came to Veterans Field, they came away 13-3 to winners in Chatham. Someone who was on the Anglers roster at that time, then was off and now back on, is Mitchell Gunsellis. Now, he is in the starting lineup, batting seventh and playing third base. Do you know in the week or so that he was gone, has he still been working out and playing baseball? Not a lot, but he's fine. You know, it, that's probably a good thing. Take a little break, take a little time off, and, you know, it's a good round of batting. He, had, he was here for early's, good round of BP, and Mitch will be fine. 
Uh, A.J. Murray's the D.H. tonight. He had played third base for the last few games. Told us after that first start at third, he had not played there since middle school. But what do you think that says about A.J. really doing whatever it takes to help the team? Exactly, and that's what this group is like. We've got so many guys that can do that. They're all interchangeable parts. And what I really liked was guys volunteering, saying, hey, coach, I know we're, we're struggling at this spot and this spot. I'll be glad to try. Or I did that in high school. And that's, that's why these guys are such a great group of guys to coach. Well, you preach defense and fundamentals. What type of manager is Cooper Farris over on the Gateman side? Pretty much the same way. Pretty much the same thing. He's old school like I am, and we think that that's the, the closest to the pro game these guys see for a while. You know, they're, they're college coaches. You know, a lot of these guys bunt in the first inning, and you know, we're just not going to do that right now. It's just let the kids play. Let the kids show themselves off to the scouts. And then late in the game, when the game's on the line, now we're going to do our fundamentals. Now we're going to do our situational stuff. You know, now we're going to do our short ball. Well, tonight, the anglers welcome in the Gateman trying to snap back-to-back -back losses. Manager John Schiffner, good luck. Thank you very much, Johnny. Now let's send it back to the booth with Dom Catronio.